Hey up folks, welcome to Son of Dell's live vlog on this Wednesday the 21st of June. Uh, happy summer to all of you by the way, because obviously it's the first day of meteorological summer shall we call it today. Now coming up on my vlog today I've got the unboxing for June's, hang on let me get this right now, June's Gibson's Jigsaw Puzzle Subscription Service. I've got another couple of jigsaws which I've managed to pick up bargains on Amazon. I've got a couple of boot reviews, a Mark Billingham one and a Dan Brown one. I've also got a lot of information about what I've been doing lately and a rather cool present that my wife's bought me. All that coming up. But first of all, the boxing, unboxing, not boxing, uh, the unboxing of the Gibson's Jigsaw Puzzle subscription box for June 2023. Now, yes, I have renewed my subscription to the Gibson Jigsaw Puzzle subscription because I absolutely love the jigsaws. Um, some of them aren't like ones I would normally have bought, but that's the beauty of a subscription service. Anyway, here is said box, Gibson's box. And the jigsaw in it today is a really nice one, actually. Um, it's a place called Port Merion, and if you've never heard of it, it's down south. And as you can see, there's a lot of detail in it. I'll come a bit closer so you can see. There's a lot of detail in it. Um, and it's by the artist called Brian Evans, as you can see. And he sort of specialises in good, really good paint, uh, paintings, as you can see. There's a lot, like I say, there's so much detail on it, it's nuts. And there's the usual, you know, dogs, cats, uh, people in wheelchairs, people in mobility scooters, which I'm glad they're putting more of now because a lot of the older jigsaws, they seem to focus on people just being able-bodied and that's not always the case. Now, as I said before, the Jigsaw Puzzle subscription service is from Gibson's. I'll, the link is underneath this vlog. Uh, like I say, I'm more than pleased with it because it's somewhat unusual and there's a lot of stuff on there. What I don't like are jigsaws with just like a house and flowers. I like have a bit of variety and these jigsaws from Gibson's seem to give you that. So, like I say, if anybody's interested, uh, the link is under my vlog, and it's the Gibson's Jigsaw Puzzle Subscription Series Thousand Piece Puzzle for June 2023. Now, while I'm on the subject to jigsaws, before I leave this particular segment, I'll just show you a couple of jigsaws I bought recently. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Ravensburger jigsaws and they do a villainous series. Now, I've done a couple of these, I've got a couple of these, should I say, and I've got the Disney villains. These are actually the Marvel villains. Now the first one is Ultron and if you have a look at the design of this, you have a look at the detail on it. Sorry if the light's shining on it a bit, but as you can see it is so detailed. It really is. It's the villain's sinister plans, imposing allies and meddling enemies. You've got to collect them all. Now that first one is Ultron. And I picked that up off Amazon for £7, brand new and sealed, £7. You can't get a jigsaw for £7 nowadays. So £7 for that one. And this one was even better. This one was £6.50, again on, on um, Amazon. And what I do, I go on and I type in 1,000 piece jigsaw puzzles for adults, put them in price order and have a see which ones are on offer. Not all the time, but I do do that. And as you can see here, this one is Hella, H-E-L-A. Again, sinister plans, all different like uh, characters from the um, Marvel world all around, all villains and God knows what else, but the main character in that is Hella. And that one was £6.50 on Amazon again. So if you want a really, really good bargain, just go on to um, Amazon, type in 1,000 piece puzzles for adults and just see what comes up. You'll be amazed. I've had some absolute brilliant bargains off there. Now, what's been happening since I last spoke to you? Well, to be honest with you, quite a lot. We've been very, very busy. Um, I did go for my MRI scan. I can't remember if I told you on the last vlog or not, but if I didn't, what happened was I went down all nice and confident and I knew I was having an MRI scan on my brain, which they managed to find. And um, it didn't go right at all. I had a massive, massive anxiety attack. I mentioned it before, I think, in my last vlog. Um, I haven't had anything since. I haven't re uh, heard off them to say I've got to go for another scan or anything, so I'm still waiting on that. Uh, as you can see, I've had my hair cut, finally. It's not that big grey mop that it was last time I spoke to you. Uh, the brilliant hairdresser is called RDS Hairdressing in Blackpool, and the guy is called Mark, 
who actually runs it and he is brilliant absolutely brilliant him and frankie between them run a brilliant rds hairdressing in blackpool again i might put the link underneath my vlog for you if not just search for it they're on facebook and they've got their own website so um yeah that's worth doing uh we've also had visitors actually um last week we had our very 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 good friends and family we class them as uh sarah and her mum janet come up from leicester to visit visitors now we didn't do a lot in the week it was a bit of a quiet week because it was very very hot but on the thursday we decided to go to fleetwood and fleetwood is usually when we're in fleetwood what we will do we will go to the market the craft shop walk down the high street and go in a witherspoons pub called the thomas drummond and that was the plan however it didn't go according to plan because we went into the weatherspoons thomas drummond and it was quite empty so we went all the way to the back of the room bear in mind it was about 29 degrees on this day and the back doors were shut so we asked if it could be open so we could allow air in well this was the first thing that went wrong because he said they couldn't do it because there was a smoking area the other side and if the smoke came in they'd be at fault blah 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 so we thought okay sat down at this big round table all four of us me deb janet and uh, sarah and we sat down and we ordered our meals now i always have a burger when i'm out i always do and i had this uh, big jack daniels tennessee burger and my friend sarah ordered a barbecue burger my mum ordered fish and chips uh, sorry sarah's mum ordered fish and chips and deb ordered a veg vegetable burger with chips and everything now usually the food from there is fantastic and we know have a problem however when they were going up to the um bar i had a funny feeling that things were not quite right and when they i said to mum i've got a feeling when they come back they're going to say a lot of the stuff isn't available why were we in for the shock there was no fish and chips the only thing they could offer that was vegetarian for deb was either veggie chili or veggie curry and bear in mind it was 29 degrees so she certainly weren't in the mood for anything like that there was no ice in the ice machine the ice machine had broke and we couldn't believe this we were like seriously and they had a list of food that was available that was only like this and normally you've got three or four plastic pages of food and drinks and stuff so we thought, right, we'll need to find somewhere else because we can't eat here. Otherwise, Deb's got to have chilli or curry and mum can't have fish and chips and she loves the fish and chips. So we went out and we started looking down the high street at pubs and stuff. Some of them didn't serve food, some of them weren't open. But then we had a brainwave that we used to go a chip shop down there. On the As you're walking down Fleetwood High Street from the market, it's on the right-hand side of the road. And we used to use it all the time until they had a big fire there and it was closed for quite some time well it's back open now and it's called the eating place p-l-a-i-c-e and it's on fleetwood high street and i went in there and i was i was really hungry at this point so was mum so was dad so was sarah we'd walked for miles and we thought right we need some to eat and they were doing an on the board special and it was nine pounds 75 and it was fish chips peas two rounds of bread and butter and a mug of coffee now i'm going to show you while i'm talking this is the size of the fish and chips which i had as you can see it is massive compared to my hand which you can just see off the side of the picture now it was an 18 to 20 ounce piece of battered cod and i'm pleased to say i ate every piece of that fish every bit i left a few chips which i didn't mind because i let the fish and the fish was the center part of the meal now bear in mind i had that Mum had a small fish and chips, Deb had a small fish and chips, Sarah had a burger and fries, uh, sorry, burger and chips and also onion rings, plus she had drinks, extra cans of pop and cups of coffee and everything and all of us ate in there for under £40. And I think that's an absolute bargain and every time we go Fleetwood now, we're going to be going there, we're not going to bother with weather spoons. Um, it was a big letdown to be honest um, because we'd walk quite far to get to the weather spoons anyway and we had to walk almost the same distance to get to the chip shop now bear in mind i'm not very mobile because i walk with a stick and i have to use a glove and i've got the stick and the glove on the stick like that and my, my, my balance isn't brilliant now my mum bless her um her balance isn't great either she gets tired really quick sarah has got uh, suffers with asthma and the heat was coming down literally on us and we were flaking by the time we got to this chip shop but luckily we had this lovely chippy meal which was fantastic can't thank them enough they saved our bacon on that day um and then we just literally took it easy for a couple of days till they went back sunday just gone so it's been a bit busy the last um 
couple of weeks I've also had things that I've been doing in the house you know we've been clearing up we've been doing a bit of, a little bit of spring cleaning not a lot but sorting stuff out now something else I've had to cope with and I didn't know what was causing it but I've got this rash on my arm as you can see I've got like a rash on my elbows and it's it keeps blistering up and I've had it for a couple of weeks now and I never twigged what it could have been and I went round to the chemist yesterday and he actually told me it's a fungal infection and I said well how can it be a fungal infection I wash every day and I use hand wash and all this sort of stuff and he said no 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 he says it's not that he says what he says your body sweats and when your body sweats dirt gets trapped in the sweat and it ends up in your skin he says and literally it can it can just happen it, you know he said but you will find it happens more in the hot weather well i never twigged because the last couple of weeks here we've had 20 25 28 30 degree temperatures all the way across the, the, the entire two weeks so it, I've, I've now found out what's causing it and i've been using this cream only got it yesterday but i've been using it today and yesterday and already it isn't blistering it's just literally going flat now so i know that it's going to do the trick um, but apparently it's really really common if you if you uh, suffer with sweat quite bad which I do anyway if you sweat on your arms and of course your arms are constantly if you sit it on a chair they're on the arm of the chair and there's bacteria on the chair obviously so you're going to get it on your skin and of course if you're sitting outside and enjoying the day you don't think oh I need to wash my arm every time I put it on the chair and that's what's happened it's got infected and literally it makes your skin go all blistery and it's a fungal infection, believe it or not, which made me sound disgusting when he told me. I thought, oh, no, no, it can't because I wash. And he said, it's nothing to do with washing. He said, it's to do with the heat, sweat and bacteria. That's it. He said, and it's really, really common. So I felt better about that. Now, like I say, it's been four weeks since I've done a vlog because I've not really been in the mood to do a vlog. Um, it's one of them things where because the weather's been so lovely, I've been sitting outside a lot and making the most of the nice weather. Because we don't we don't get it for a long time in the UK, usually about four months and then all of a sudden the weather changes and before you know it you're raining and cold, you can't sit outside, uh, it's freezing, you can't do anything. I can't even do jigsaws when it's freezing cold. Um, I have done one jigsaw in the last couple of weeks which I'll show you in a minute in my jigsaw gallery so here we go, you will take care and there's some more stuff coming up. Now it's book review time folks, book, 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 books, and I've read two. Now the first one I read I picked up in a charity shop, and as you can see it's quite thick, it's a Dan Brown book and it's called Origin. 
Now, I didn't know this when I read it, but the, um, I'm, I'm a real fan of a group called the Alan Parsons Project, and one of my favourite CDs of theirs is called Gaudi, which is based on the, the um, architect and brilliant genius called Antonio Gaudi. And he produced the last, he built the La Stragada Familiar, the famous, famous, famous cathedral in Barcelona. And this book, Origin, centers around a lot to do with Gaudi and his work and his life. So not only was I enjoying a really good pacey thriller, but I was also enjoying the history of Gaudi and all about his life and his works and where he got his, his um, what do you call it for? his information, whatever, you know, the way he was influenced, his, yeah, his influence, where he got that from. Um, so yeah, it's a fantastic book. It's really hard to put down as well because uh, the, main, the main guy in it is Robert Langdon, who's obviously Da Vinci Code, Angels and Demons, and Inferno, if I'm not mistaken. And this one really, really is clever, very clever, because it's kind of like it, what is this about until the end? And right, right near the end, you figure out the significance of everything that's happened and why it's happened. And it's clever because it involves religion, architecture, it involves uh, science, scientists, mathematicians, everything. Now, I would give that a good 8 out of 10, which is good for me to give a book like that. Uh, so, if you're ever interested, read the Dan Brown book, Origin. And it's worth 8 out of 10 because it really is a fantastic read. Now I keep going back to him. I keep going back to him. I can't put his books down. Mark Billingham is an absolutely fantastic underrated author. I think he is one of the best writers of crime that I have actually read. And I've read a fair few crime novels. Now this is book 4 in the Tom Thorne detective novels now there's 19 of them so i've got a lot to read yet and this one as you can see is called the burning girl i won't tell you too much about it because it's giving the story away all it's about is um the gangs in london as somebody setting fire to a girl 20 years earlier and getting a, and, and admitting to it and being put in prison then saying 20 years later that he wasn't guilty and somebody else had done it and it's a really it's a really in-depth look at the gangs of London and how they operate and how people try to take over territories and the lengths they will go to take over territories. Now, like I said, Mark Billingham is fantastic. I, I really do think he's one of the most underrated authors I've ever read. I would have thought there would have been a hell of a lot more about him than there is. You know, he, he, I think he's up there with your James Pattersons. I really do. You know, James Patterson America is massive. He's written loads of books. And John Grisham, this guy, I think, is on a par with James Patterson. Um, I really do like the Mark Billingham books. And I'm going to give it 9 out of 10 again. And I've already read book 5, which is called uh, Lifeline, Lifeless, something like that. And I've read that one. And that one was the first book I wrote, uh, I read. And when I read it, I just thought, wow, this is amazing. I've got to read some more of these. And I would give that one 9 out of 10 as well. So really, I'm rating two books. Book 4 and book 5 of the Tom Thorne books are definitely 9 out of 10, along with the other three. Um, so I'm just looking forward to the next one. But I'm going to take a break and read something else for a bit. Otherwise, I'll get through them way too quick because I'll just go from one to another to another and before I know it, I'll have finished all 19 and have nothing left, which I'll be upset about. So, yeah, that is definitely 9 out of 10. And it's Mark Billingham, The Burning Girl. Now, while I'm on the subject of books, I've also been buying uh, books by an author called Graham Masterton. And Graham Masterton has wrote some books featuring a detective woman called, uh, if I get this wrong now, I look like a plum, Katie Flynn, I think her name is, and they're set in Ireland. Uh, I've read a couple of them, and there's quite a few of them actually, there's nine or ten, and i managed to get about seven of them so far. Uh, some in hardback, some in paperback, from a place called Music Magpie, and Music Magpie basically sells everything from books, CDs, DVDs, um, all sorts of stuff, and it's really, really good. It's a place called Music Magpie. You can sell tech on there and buy tech on there. Um, and I've also got a bit of a review, really. It's kind of a review for a, a, a shopping app called Temu, T-E-M-U. Now, I've all, we've ordered three things off there so far. 
The first one my wife ordered was a dress. It was a summer dress and it was a disaster because when it came, it was the material was kind of like the plastic that you put on patio tables. You know, when you go to like cafes and they've got tables outside and they've got them plastic tablecloths on them, that's like the material for this dress. So there was no way Deb was going to wear that in the summer. She would have baked. So that's been disposed of. The second thing was three jigsaws. Now I had three 1000 piece jigsaws off them. The first one was fantastic quality. It was in a nice bag and everything, uh, like a hessian bag. And it's of four different owls, uh, but they're all color coded. So you've got purple, blue, red and black or something. And there's some other stuff going on underneath. And it's a beautiful jigsaw. The second one was a map of the United States of America. Again, a thousand piece. Not so brilliant quality, but still okay, still fantastic. The third one was an absolute nightmare. The pieces were thinner, almost as thin as tissue paper. You'd need a, a little breeze of wind and it would blow every piece off the table. It's shocking quality, it really is. And I've left reviews accordingly um, because I do review my products. Now after that, I thought to myself, well, I need some socks because I've got socks upstairs, but they needed chucking because some of them had more holes in than just the one you put your foot in. So I went on and I ordered some brilliant, brilliant novelty socks. There's about seven or eight designs on them and they're things like Skeletor, Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, you've got Jason out of Friday the 13th, you've got other stuff as well. And they are brilliant quality, I'm so impressed with them. And they were 89 pence a pair. 89 pence a pair of socks. And the quality on them is stunning. I've worn four pairs in four days and they really are, they're comfortable. And what I like about them is I tend to find when you buy cheap socks, when you get them up your leg, they're very tight at the top. And if you don't fold them over, you get massive marks off of the elastic from around your legs. These, not a chance. I roll them all the way up and they don't even leave a mark on my leg. Um, so yeah, I'd recommend Timu, but not for dresses as we've seen. I mean, they might be brilliant other than that, but it's, the dress quality was shocking. So socks, yes. Jigsaws, possibly, depending on what you get. Uh, but the, the, the dress, no chance, no chance at all. And the socks are fantastic. So that's my review, really, for Timu, which is a um, app website, T-E-M-U. Uh, I would give it probably 7 out of 10 at the moment because I haven't had enough stuff off there. So yeah, uh, my final word today, which is coming up after I've just shown you one more item. Uh, the final word today, again, believe it or not, is family and how people treat the families, which I do not like in the slightest. But I want to show you something first. My wife bought me. Now, being a massive Pet Shop Boys fan, and I mean a massive Pet Shop Boys fan, I decided, uh, Deb asked me if I wanted this when it come out, and it's called Smash. It's called Smash, and it basically is... A book all about the Pet Shop Boys songs, every song they bought out and the, you know the stuff behind it and stuff. So you've got a really nice thick book there as you can see. You've got five discs, five discs. You've got two CDs, oh, sorry three CDs including a, if I'm not mistaken, a bonus CD. If I'm not mistaken, just hold on, I will just check the details. Yes, Blu-ray 1, Blu-ray, there's a Blu-ray, the videos from 1985 to 2020. So you've got 35 years of videos on there and there are actually 53 or 55, 55 I think, 55 videos on there. Blu-ray 2, it's got a load of video extras on there, original songs and original videos to songs. And there are three CDs of singles. The first one's got 18 songs on it, then 18, then 19. So you're talking 55 songs on a triple CD set. Now I got a bargain for this because I pre-ordered it and I pre-ordered it at a price of $39.99. And when it come out, it was actually £43. Now because I'd ordered it at $39.99, when it came out at 43 I thought, okay, fair enough, I've got a bit of a bargain there. But apparently what Amazon do, they find the cheapest place on the net that's bought it out and somebody bought it out for £37. 
so I got another two pounds something back as a refund as well because somebody else had got it cheaper but if you want a really really good nostalgic trip down memory lane get this it's smash and it's by the pet shop boys and it's the singles 1985 to 2020 and it is absolutely phenomenal it really is now like I said my last word today is family again and I'm quite amazed actually how people treat the families I just cannot believe I've been fortunate, I must have been fortunate, I didn't realise I was until events, but I've been fortunate because my family's close, it's a close family, it's one of those families that look out for each other, that are there to support each other when times get hard, they've always got your back. I mean, don't get me wrong, if you've done something like really seriously illegal, like killing someone, they won't like cover up for you or nothing, because that isn't how we work. You know, if you've done a crime, then you should basically be able to face the time if you've done that. But my family is literally there for me if I need them. And they're there for not just me, they're there for Deb as well. They, you know, they, they, they've, they've done favours for us. They've been take us to places when we haven't got no transport. And I think looking at Facebook and looking at all the social media profiles, I say I'm lucky. Because I've read stuff on the internet about families literally tearing into each other, don't want to know each other, accusing each other of, you know, beat, uh, abuse when they were younger and all sorts of stuff. And I just think to myself, wow, seriously, seriously, that's how that that's classed as family. You know, I mean, I've had enemies, real enemies, and I've not wished that on them. Um, because I've always been one of those people who thinks that everything that happens to you makes you who you are. And if you're happy, happy with who you are now, then everything that's happened to you has made you like that. So all the life events, I wouldn't change them, my life events. You know, at school, uh, sorry, when I was growing up, we had next to nothing. At school, I was bullied, ridiculed and picked on. Uh, when I left school, I, I tried to get a job, but ended up working with YTS. I got agency work. I ended up working for a, a couple of companies. Then I got diagnosed with my HMSN, which is hereditary motor sensory neuropathy, which has now been renamed to Shawcott Married Tooth, and I've got 1A. Uh, then I met Julie, who I thought was going to be my wife forever. You know, I was in love with her. I thought she was fantastic. Turned out to be an abuser, both physical and mental. Left her, thought my life was over. Met Deb. The rest is history. Uh, nine years ago, we got married and I've never been happier now. And I look at all the events of my life and think everything that happened to me growing up led to where I am now. So I wouldn't change a thing because if I change one thing, it could change the entire course of my life. And I wouldn't want it to be any different now than what it is. Because I've got a roof over my head, I've got a loving wife, I've got a lovely dog, I've got a nice house, I've got a wonderful family who, like I say, we're always there for each other. And I've got a nice little street here where we look out for each other. We've got friends, we've got neighbours, we've got... It, it, it's literally as good as it can get for me. Um, people say, you know, winning the lottery is out there, but their dream. To be honest, it, do, it doesn't really make a difference to me other than I'd buy my own house. But I'd still be the same person, I'd still live the same way. I wouldn't change a thing, I really wouldn't. And that's what I'm saying to you. Sometimes, you know, you've got to remember you've only got one family if they are horrible to you then fair enough i'm sorry about that if they're nasty to you and you, you can't forgive them that's up to you but forgiveness is something really that people need to do a bit more of uh, if it's not if it's not serious and it's just something trivial you know oh i'll wait till they apologize to me and all this sort of stuff it, it, life just ends before you know that you know you'll be waiting for apologies standing at the graveside and i'm not going to do that so I just think that family need to start recognising people as family rather than treating them like rubbish and thinking they're always going to stick around just because they are family. They don't. It doesn't work like that. Anyway, it's been a massive vlog. Um, I hope, I'm sorry I've talked your ears off. You've seen some unboxings. You've seen a couple of boot reviews. I've got a couple of CD. I've got my CD set to show you. Uh, I've told you all about what's been happening in the last few weeks. And hopefully I'll start doing one of these vlogs about every two or three weeks, depending on what happens over summer, because obviously I'm always sitting outside. But thank you for watching. I hope you are all well and enjoying this lovely summer, and I will do another vlog soon. Thanks so much.